And for the moment, we're going to go ahead and pause on the news since we haven't finished everything just yet. But we have to get to our interview now. So we're going to go ahead and bring in our interview guest here. Uh, D-Pad, uh, it sounds like your connection's doing a little bit better. Do you want to try giving it a shot here first before we... I don't do... think so. I... All right. It, then... Plus, this would give me a good time to do that intense homework level that I've been neglecting for some time now. Right. Okay. So uh, me and Deal are going to go ahead team. and handle the interview here. Sure. So, so should, let the, me... should the rest of us mute? Yes. yes. Go ahead. Go ahead and mute at this time while we get our call our people in here. Alrighty. So good. You have them both. I do. I, I actually we interviewed them before, so they're already on my Skype here, ready to go. Well, you interviewed. Oh wait, we did. Yep. Gemini, were you here before? I feel like you were here before. I I. I do not recall if I've been on this show before. It's possible. I, th I think so. I don't remember. I did some interviews last year for Everfree Northwest. So Yeah, I believe we actually we... did get you last year. Swear yeah. we did. That sounds very... The name him and I just sounds... Okay, I'm going to go off and do that work. Enjoy the interview. All right. Oh, thanks. All right. And we got, uh, got Gemini Star and Pony Tim for Everfree Northwest here. How are you uh, both yes, doing? I, I make a return. Yes, you make a return after a two-week hiatus because computer issues on the part. Woo! All right, and um, at the moment, our um, group is muted, so we have me and Deal is going to help me out with the interview as well. So let's go ahead and uh, start off with, um, well, a little introduction of who you are and what your positions are for Everfree Northwest, um, starting with uh, Pony Tim. All right, my name's Walt. Well, Tim, and I am the director of media for Everfree uh, Northwest. All right, and Gemini? I'm Gemini Starr, and I'm the director of the Department of Design for Everfree Northwest. Everything visual comes through us. All right. Hmm. All right. All right. Um, okay, well, um, let's. Well, why don't we go ahead and talk a little bit about Everfree Northwest? Um, can you give uh, people who have been hiding under a rock for the last couple of years an idea of everything that Northwest is all about? Uh, conveniently, that's actually where we have the con, is underneath a rock. It's just a very big rock, so there's plenty of room. Oh, well, that's, that's definitely <laughs> good. Right. At least it's not a boulder. Then the moment you start getting the rave going, you know, it just go over and, yeah, you know, there goes the con and probably half of Seattle. All right. Are uh, you considering being... how much rain they get, I mean... Uh... Are they just going to get washed away one day? <laughs> Although, well, surprise, like, very happily, every single convention we've had, no rain. Beautiful. Nice. Hmm. Oh, yeah, during the summer, it's absolutely gorgeous here. Of course, during the winter, it just sort of gets covered in a big gray blanket of clouds. And by the end of those six or seven months of winter, you want to cut your own wrists. Not because you want to die, but because blood is red, and red is a color, and you haven't seen a color for six or seven months. It's all <laughs> gray. Uh, at, least it, at least it's a little bit better than most of North America this winter. Everything's been a cover of not gray, but white. Uh, Which raises an interesting question. Uh, why do you choose your current venue and time of year to host your convention? Well, the convention got started... Um, actually, and this is secondhand information. Uh, this is something I learned actually myself, uh, earlier this year. Basically, uh, the convention started, uh, a bunch of people got together at, uh, one of the local furry conventions. Um, they were going to have like a MLP meetup, uh, at that convention. They were expecting maybe, uh, 40 people. Uh, so they had a pretty small room. They ended up with almost 200. They had to uh, get changed to a different room. And, uh, yeah, basically uh, a few of the people there uh, say, hey, do we want to make this into a pony convention? Um, because obviously there's a bunch of people, local people, that are interested. So, I mean, that's why this convention is in Seattle, because a bunch of people saw the interest in it, uh, saw the possibility of a local Seattle convention. Well, and then there's, of course, more uh, to it. But... And, of course, the reason for having it in the middle of the summer is, as I mentioned, otherwise it's gray and kind of rainy here. But in the summer, it's gorgeous. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, the summer months, those tend to be, well, the convention months, so. Right. That's yeah, oh, so much stuff to do this summer. Goodness. It's <laughs> it's great to see, how, to see how all these conventions have popped up over the last two, three years. Um, have there been any others? Hmm. I don't know where I was going to go with that question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, that, that got sticky. Um for the for this year's convention, do you guys have anything special that you have lined up in terms of um, either events or guests? I'll go ahead and uh, start out. Uh, we're going to be having uh, se- we uh, have several guests already on the docket. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, we have uh, Miss. Uh, I- I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce her name. Uh, Marika Hendrickson. Oh, you knew who exactly I was thinking, talking of. Yep, the one with the accent in the name that you can't pronounce. Oh, well, because I'm a silly American. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, so the voice actress for Gilda. Uh, we also have Georgia Ball and uh, Heather Nuffer, uh, who are both uh, writers for the uh, MLP comic book. Hmm. And we also have Michael Dobson, the voice of Bulk Biceps. And we are actually going to be his first uh, MLP uh, fan convention. Ooh, nice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And don't worry, we have lots of other guests uh, in the works. We actually just got confirmation that uh, for another guest that we can't quite say yet. But uh, you should be hearing uh, another guest announcement from us in the next uh, week or two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Interesting. So chat, you know, you should be uh, checking their website frequently, see if there might be um, something that just tips you over to attend if you're on the fence. Um, And Jenna, a quick question. What sort of things does your department do um, visually to um, help in announcing events or guests and helping us to understand uh, what's so special about these things? Well, if you've seen any of the other guest announcements that we've done for Everfree Northwest this year, Uh, There's a very specific style that goes into them. Uh, I've been working with Dana Simpson, our staff artist, Mm -hmm. and we've been generating these sort of poster style flyers. The idea is to go for a movie poster effect, sort of circa like Vertigo, that sort of thing. Very Saul Bass design, which probably won't mean anything to anyone except maybe a small percentage of the people listening to this show. But we're sort of playing up the strange, almost tense theme of Everfree this year. Uh, This year is uh, villains, rivals, and friends. We're focusing on the tendency in the show for the antagonists to become friends, to become protagonists, or at least neutral. We've seen it happen with Nightmare Moon becoming Princess Luna, best princess, I must add. (laughs) We've We've seen it with Trixie, who has become the uh, something and apologetic Trixie. I can't remember that first part right now. We've seen hints of it in other characters. I keep hoping Gilda will come back, actually, and be a little less Gilda. (laughs) (laughs) But, yeah, that's our theme. And so to bring that into the, the visual has been our goal to sort of cement it as here's what our convention is doing this year. We have a particular focus on it, and mm-hmm. it's it's different from last year. It's not just the same convention over and over. We're actually changing things up and going for a different look, a different feel. You know, make each one unique. Yes, we've actually um, done some updates with our schedule, so we'll mm-hmm. actually be have it. We'll have mm-hmm. more room and more time for more panels this year. Um, what was the percentage uh, that was getting thrown around earlier? Like, I was hearing 15 20%. Uh, I don't remember that number, but I have seen some of the effect of that, you know, making better use of the hotel rooms we have, uh, giving a little more space, the hotel and convention center. Should be pretty interesting. Interesting in a good way. Well, of course, with this um, with this new and improved Air Free Northwest, you'll have a mascot that goes with it, too, I assume. Ah, front page. That was quite directly the creation of Dana Simpson. Again, our staff artist, Mm -hmm. our primary staff artist. We actually have a couple. But she 
she kind of designed that character right out of her own experiences. When she was younger, she was actually a journalism major, and mm-hmm. she worked for a while on a newspaper. Um, I'm trying to remember, I think it may have been the Seattle Times. I'll double check. I probably got that wrong. She'll yell at me later. But she was very familiar with the whole newspaper thing. And when for last year's theme, I suggested, well, let's take a page from, you get it, a page? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Let's take a page uh-huh. from the uh, Ponyville Confidential episode. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll have this whole newspaper theme. You know, we'll have, uh, we'll have folks reporting on stuff. We'll have a con book that looks like a newspaper. Dana just picked that idea up and ran with it, created this reporter pony who has the capability to get pretty much anywhere and get info on any of the guests, any of the big names in our fandom, all of that. Kind of a perfect fit. So there you go. That's the history of our little gray pony front page. Hmm. So, uh, it so, sounds like the whole convention is pretty much just going to have like a full free press kind of theme to it this year. Well, it certainly well, did not last this year. Uh, um, again, last year was, again, that was the theme, but this year it is. Um, redemption of villains. Um, in oh, fact, right. we've uh, even our contest that we have had. We've had a writing contest. We've had an art contest. Have reflected that theme of redemption. Ah, and so that's why you know I decided that the movie poster look to some things was just you know it seemed right at the time. I don't have a particular reason for that, but you'll see front pages showing up in some of the other materials this year, especially at the convention. But the uh, the focus being on that sort of strange tension and resolution in the show. One of the mm-hmm. things I think is most interesting in the show is how some of those enemies have been dealt with as, you know, they, they become friends or they, they, are, they are treated with, you know, I mean, sure, they get the crap kicked out of them with, you know, flying rainbows or whatever, but... They, you know, there, there's always this attempt to kind of reason with them, to try to be friendly with them. That happened a lot in first season. I'm hoping to see more of that coming up again throughout the series. I mean, we've been seeing a lot of discord in this season. That um, too. Uh, he's more of a frenemy, I would think, though. Although, I am very interested to see how it plays out in the uh, season finale, where he's the one going after some type of villain. Yeah, uh, I do wonder how that's going to play out. Well, you know, Discord is sort of his own thing. I figure anyone who kind of wants to come down on the, you know, the high and mighty law and order sort of thing, no, he's not going to stand for that. That's boring. Da there, da there, da there. Sorry, I kind of stopped that one dead, didn't I? No, it's nah, fine. you're fantastic. I mean... You guys have been providing a lot of very useful information and some insight. So, and I do thank you for coming out and uh, making the effort, especially with the convention seeming, or excuse me, the convention season coming up so close. I imagine you guys are rather busy at this point in time. Oh yeah, I think we're definitely ramping some stuff up. Um, I mean, I still have I'll, I still have some work to do. Uh, I have another contest in me that I'm hoping to announce uh, next uh, by this weekend or next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, so everyone definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, I mean, there's just so much, uh, there's just so much good stuff that's coming up uh, this year. We're gonna have our third pony stock. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe that we already, uh, we're currently figuring out uh, the schedule for that. Uh, I get, I keep saying we're gonna make an announcement. We are, I swear, we're gonna. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and let everybody know uh, soon. Um, Who's the who's going to be performing? Uh, we already have our vendors um, selected. So if you go to everynw.com/vendors, uh, you can go ahead and see all the uh, people we're going to have in our wonderful uh, vendor hall this year. Um, our writing track is even larger than it was last year. Um, last year we had about. 12 panels and events. This year, I believe we have 16, if I'm correct, if uh, I remember correctly. And we're actually running uh, some pre-convention writing panels uh, right now. We actually had one uh, a few on the 26th on setting. 
Yeah, Everfree Northwest has definitely become the convention for fanfic writers to show up at. Uh, There's just so much energy there, folks from all over the place. Uh, if you have any interest in fan fiction and such, definitely make the effort to get to this con. It's incredible. I'm enthusiastic about it. I enjoy reading. So there you go. Yeah. Actually, is this, is oh, this as much a place? I'm sorry. Uh, is this as much a place for seasoned fanfic writers to attend as well as people who uh, are just getting started or only like to read? Oh, yeah. oh there's a oh. wide range of stuff. I, mean, I, I can tell you this because I'm familiar with that end of the programming. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is stuff for everybody of any level, even if you just read. There are plenty of interesting things to pick up on by attending the writing panels. You'll get to hear a lot of the big name authors talk about their inspirations, where they're going with things next, and what it is they're, what it is that kind of gets them going about the show that they really want to chase in their writing, what inspires them. And there will be plenty of uh, instructional panels. You know, here's, here's how you get started with the things about writing fiction that are pony-specific. You know, how do we deal with the fact that we have six main characters? Writing an ensemble cast is, you know, it's a bit of a challenge, as anyone who's tried it can attest. So how do you approach that? Uh, you know, how do you work in various aspects of the setting? How do you avoid sounding Mary Sue-ish when you try to put one of your own original characters in there? Things like that. Stuff for everyone. Yeah, I mean, that's just one of our tracks. Uh, this year, we um, have included a cosplay track as its own separate entity. So we're going to have... That was one thing that we did here from last year, uh, is we did not have enough uh, cosplay. So we're going to have... Uh, much more co- uh, cosplay uh, panels and events this year. Mm-hmm. We, of course, have our, um, again, besides Pony Stock, we'll, of course, have some uh, musician panels. We'll have two separate rooms uh, for gaming. We'll have our electronic gaming section, and we'll also have a tabletop gaming section. I believe that. Uh, yeah, I think there and yeah, there might be a MLP card game tournament. Uh-huh. I, I can't. Uh, <laughs> maybe there, we may have that. That may be a thing. Maybe. Oh, think. I would be surprised if that didn't happen, whether a planned event or spontaneously. Because let's face it, that's what we've got right now is that card game, and you know it's not bad. Especially. Um... Was set two coming out here in a couple weeks, and they were talking. I don't think set three will be out by the time your convention happens, but definitely later in the year. So uh, I know they're working really hard to crank out the official organized play rules so that they can host official tournaments. Um, that's that's the major thing that's going on in the play right now. So uh, hopefully we will see a sanctioned event over at um, your convention, or at least some this season. And if if it were to be a case where uh, Interplay wasn't able to officially sanction one, would you still attempt, or do you think your convention would attempt to do an unofficial one? I can't see why not. I mean, you know, unofficial, uh, informal competitions like that happen all the time. I mean, mm-hmm. folks, folks will. Uh, I, I know that, for example, with Magic: The Gathering, folks will just put together their own little drafts. You know, they'll have some some number of people and they'll just say, okay, yeah, we're going to buy this many cards. We're going to go ahead and set things up. We're going to do our own little tournament, just impromptu. Mm -hmm. So I'm positive that's going to happen at the convention. Gotcha. Yeah. I wouldn't be very surprised about that. And of course we're going to have, uh, so many panels. We're going to have panels with, uh, our special guests. We're going to have panels with community guests. Pretty much. It's just, Mm -hmm. it's going to be ever free, bigger, better, and more awesome. Um, Let's see. This this might be a, a better question for a uh, director of, of programming, but at your convention, what degree of um, interaction will fans be able to have with panelists during the p- panel? Will it be on a panel-to-panel basis? It will be on a panel-to-panel basis. It will also depend on like how the panelists want to handle uh, their panel. Um, I fully expect most panels will have a Q&A section at the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
but yeah, I mean, if the panelists say want to get out into the crowd afterwards and talk to people in smaller groups or one on one, I'm sure that will happen. I'm I'm expect that happened with like a our write uh, our writing track, maybe with our art track. Um, again, it will depend on the person. Right, Doubt that's right. going to happen with any of our uh, VA uh, <laughs> tracks or anything like that, but. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it might. We've had some pretty jovial folks previously as guests, and, you know, I can't, I can't say specifically who's coming up, but I think we'll, we'll get some folks quite willing to mingle with the crowd and, you know, be, mm -hmm. be part of the group, not just sort of up there behind a table. Yeah, oh, yeah. Worked, I worked VIP so. relations last year at a different convention, and uh, depending on the VA or the, excuse me, the VIP, it, yeah, they do have a varying degree of uh, crowd interaction, so whatever they're comfortable with, you'd be surprised. Um, let's see. Uh, Circuit, do you have anything uh, you want to ask at this moment? Uh, yeah, I, I did have a bit of a question. This, Since this is your third year, you've been doing this for, well, obviously three years now. Have there been uh, a lot of... Um, Issues with going to three years on a convention. Usually, I only see conven some of the smaller conventions only go one year or two year. Three years is quite an accomplishment. I'm sure there's been some challenges involved with that. Well, the funny thing is, I think the reason we've made it to three years is that we've learned quite a bit from the first two. Uh, we have a lot of folks in the area who've worked for other types of conventions who've been able to bring in some of their wisdom and previous experience. I was working for furry conventions for nearly a decade before I started with Everfree Northwest. And, you know, I was able to bring some of that in. And we have plenty of other folks. It's the experience and the knowledge that keeps us going. I think things are getting smoother and smoother. The issues, there are actually fewer issues with a con that goes three years than there are with the first year convention. Oh. That's yeah, the first, the first year is the hardest. You don't know how things are going to go. You have no idea how many people you're going to get for sure. It's it's all up in the air. At about the three-year mark, you start really getting a feel for it. You start getting in your groove. Oh, we have so much groove. We have groove coming out our ears. It's actually a problem. We keep like towels and cotton balls on hand to keep the groove from leaking all over the forest because we get charged for that. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, what advice would you have for a first-time convention attendee? Uh, what advice would you have for them, either for avoiding the uh, the groove drippage or anything else at your convention? Um, I can never say this enough. Like a six two one, six hours of sleep, two meals, one shower every day. That I will preach that to the end of the time. Hopefully, everyone will eventually do that. I I thought it was. Two hours of sleep, one meal, and six friends in the shower with you. Oh, my. I, oh I, I my. get confused on this. I just sort of <laughs> wing it at the convention, you know? I mean, I didn't quite follow it myself uh, last year. I mean, I think uh, the best I ever got was five hours. Um, I, I know I was, <laughs> I I was it, definitely lazing it up there. With <laughs> I thought it was six prints, two autographs, and one plushie. So we had to buy while you were at a convention, but <laughs> I thought it was supposed to be six hundred twenty-one dollars. In all yeah. seriousness, you want to try and give yourself um, time to rest. And you want to give your, you want to shower. Nobody wants to be that guy or no. that girl. I'm not and sure how anybody is that guy, really. You have to eat. I mean, you don't, you don't have to go to a restaurant or anything. Uh, you can like uh, bring the uh, bread, peanut butter, and jelly, and just. No, eat that. I mean, that'd be cheap meals for quite a bit. I think, but I think you do have actually, to get calories in you. Yeah, that would be, I think, my primary suggestion to folks. I know way, way too many folks who are on a budget. They really want to get to the convention. It's very important to them. But they get to the con. They spend all their cash in the dealer's room, which is you know great for us, great for the dealers. Food. They're not sure where they're staying. They try to camp out in a room that's got 14 people in it already. They end up having a miserable time by the end of the convention because they've not treated themselves well. And then they go home. You know, they get sick. They go home and they spread concrete among all their friends. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Take care of yourself first. You'll have a lot more fun with the convention. And that's the important thing. The important thing is take care of yourself. Otherwise, you know, everybody's having a bad time of it. Yeah, speaking of the vendor hall, I would also recommend budget. 
Know how much money you can spend and stick to it. <laughs> um, it's kind of like if you're going to a casino, if you don't have a budget of say, oh, I'm going to spend a hundred bucks, you may then just spend five hundred or something, something you can't afford. I mean, this right. is uh, not quite the same thing, but it's the same principle. But um, go in saying, I have one hundred dollars to spend, or two hundred, or fifty dollars, or ten, whatever. Uh, fits your budget and stick to it. Which you may be thinking, you know, oh, I guess I better not bring my credit card because I don't want to fall into that trap of spending. But whenever you travel, you should have an emergency fund in case, Hmm. oh, I don't know, whoever booked the room didn't have enough money or just bails or or got um, banished to the moon. Just have enough self-control. You need to like take a cab somewhere. You know, because you there were some choices made, and it wouldn't be safe for you to walk. Just things like that. Have have a means of backup expenditure. But um, would you? Is, was it, blah, 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 I'm sorry. Do you have any other safety advice or well-being advice for uh, any potential attendees? Hmm. Safety advice. I would say actually, I never get to bring this up, and this is my my personal advice to everyone. Absolutely. Take photos with cosplayers. Take photos with uh, with the VIPs that you see along the way. Take photos with your friends. Stay out of the, the way of traffic when you do it. There are plenty of people trying to move around in the hotel. Please don't clog things up. People trip over you. People are trying to pass through. You're going to have a hard time getting a photo. Just mm-hmm. find a spot that's a little less traffic, and it'll all be much better. And if you see something that's... Uh, suspicious or wrong, or if somebody does uh, um, something to you that um, again, you just like, okay, that's uh, say, um, that's just not some right. guy is creeping on you. <laughs> yeah. Tell our security staff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, seriously, we know. put a big effort into our security staff this year. They are there to help. Uh, security is kind of the wrong term for them. Uh, they're mostly just they're there to be friendly and make sure that things stay you know, in good shape during the convention, that nobody's having trouble. Uh, They're not there to throw people out. They're there to make sure people are safe and having fun. If you don't feel like you're safe, they'll help. Mm -hmm. And yeah, don't be afraid of them. Not, not even, not even the guys in charge, not even the the really big guys, because they're sweethearts. They really are. Yeah. honestly, it's, It's not something that we've really had too much of a problem with at our convention, but again, I mean, we definitely want everyone to have a safe, fun time. Mm-hmm. And I, I think uh, a good point to make is that they're not bouncers. I think that's yeah. the, the stigma that comes up around them is that you see the person at the door with a security badge and you think, oh, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want something to happen, you know. But uh, most security teams I've ever seen there, they're always really welcoming, like you said. And uh, they're just trying to make sure everyone has a good time, but just safely and according to policy. Um, let's see. As far as uh, travel plans to and from the convention, are there any um, recommendations you guys ha- you guys have, or any discounts that you've arranged? Uh, yes, um, we do have a uh, con price uh, for the uh, Hilton itself. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe that's one nineteen a day. If I'm if I'm right, I'm not looking at the. Uh, Web page right that, that now. That's very, I could check that on the website real quick. I forget I, exactly. I'm already that. there. Wow! Um, look at that. Let's see. Oh, it's one twenty nine per night for both uh, a double bed and king sized rooms. Um, now use yeah, the group but, code uh, pony uh, pony fourteen or p o n y one four um, to uh, reserve your room. And Again, that is that, the special con price. Yeah, that may sound expensive, but it's a really nice hotel, and it's right near the airport. So if you're flying in, you don't even have to worry about getting a, a taxi or waiting for a shuttle. You can literally walk right across the street to where the hotel is. It's fantastic. Yeah, and, and I mean, you're going to be right there at the convention. I mean, when I was at the Hilton last year, my door literally opened out to the gaming uh, room. So I just sat across the hallway. I was in electronic gaming. So you're just you're mm-hmm. right there where, where the action is. Uh, 
There are, are oh. also other hotels around, you, uh, so you can also uh, you may be able to find something. It may be a bit of a distance, but uh, maybe something a bit more uh, a little cheaper, possibly, yeah. or about the same price. I mean, we <laughs> we always run out of room at the hotel, so I mean, if you haven't booked your hotel room, do it soon um, before we fill up. Yeah. As far as transportation, well, the other nice thing about being right across from the airport is we have a light rail, uh, the the Seattle light rail or King County light rail. I forget exactly what it's named. Sound Transit. That was it. That'll take you right up into the middle of Seattle if you want to go do touristy stuff, if you want to roam around there. And there's a lot of stuff to do. And there's a good bus system there, too. So you can actually get quite some distance, you know, see plenty of things without spending a whole lot of money. It's not too expensive to ride the bus and it's pretty timely. You know, they're, they're, they're pretty good at staying on schedule. So, you know, if you find that your plane tickets get you in early on, on a Thursday and you want to burn some time or see something cool before the con, that's the way to do it. Don't be afraid of the buses and such. They have maps They're They're glad to help out. And yeah, I, I actually use the buses to get pretty much everywhere. I even get to the convention itself on the bus. I live right at the north end of Seattle, so it's easy. Yeah, me, it's a bit more difficult. Uh, first, um, going from I, – I actually lived in Phoenix the last two cons, and now I live in Chicago. So it's a bit of a, it's a bit of travel for me. Yeah, the light rail doesn't quite reach to either of those places now. Oh, <laughs> well, this year should be fun. Uh, right now the plan is to have a road trip. Um, Wait, what? I, mean, I haven't heard of this. Oh yeah, um, Ooh, road trip. Ooh, if nice. things work out, um, I'm gonna be. I will be on the road trip uh, with a couple of uh, EQD staffers and uh, an artist. Ah, watch out for those artists. They carry diseases. <laughs> but uh, again, that's if everything works out, which you never know. But that ho- I'm hoping. Again. It's been a while since I've been on a road trip, so that'd be nice. Speaking of um, arriving at the convention, what sort of advice do you guys have for registration? Uh, I know that uh, BronyCon was my first convention, and I was surprised at how long, um, if you try to show up convention day and get your badge, how long that can take. So what sort of advice would you have for uh, avoiding missing anything? We have a rather streamlined registration system now uh we have had things take a little bit of time in the past again that's kind of the youthful inexperience running the first couple years of a con and this Mm -hmm. year we're using a pretty good system that's going to let us get folks through in record time uh if you bring your make sure you have your id with you and you're pretty much set you know it'll be very very easy to get through uh the the system is just, I can't even talk it up enough. It's fantastic. And we've had plenty of folks working hard on making sure that that you're not stuck, you know, late Friday going, well, now that I've missed a good chunk of the con, what am I going to do? Now, nah, you'll be able to get through real easy. Just make sure you have that ID with you so we can find you in the system. Pre-register, that makes it go even faster. And you're set. Excellent. Well, that's... um. That's it sounds really streamlined. I'm interested to see how that is going to be impl- excuse me going to be implemented. Oh, yeah. um, we actually yeah. have a uh, we have a few people on our registration staff who are specifically there to brandish whips. So if things go too slowly, you know we just okay, come on, move it along here, and it works. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. And of course, there is a. Um, we will have registration open, I believe, on Thursday for a little bit of time. Uh, I don't believe we've set a, a time yet for that. But if you are there on Thursday, you should be able to pick up your badge that day. And um, the line should be a lot nicer that day. Oh, that's another thing. Last year, part of the trouble was uh, it was uh, Saturday. Was it Saturday or Friday? That was Oh, it was Saturday that was July 4th. And so there were some really weird things with stuff, you know, the stuff not being uh, at full operation, you know, uh, the hotel was a little weird and the, the, some of the restaurants in the area were closed and things like that. And it was just a bit of chaos. Uh, this year we're working with the hotel since July 4th 
falls on that Friday, they're going to have a full complement of staff. It's not going to be a sort of uh, sort of mess of who knows what's up and running. It's all going to be there. It's going to be just like any other weekend. It'll be really nice and smooth. So you won't have to worry about weirdness. It'll work out. Well, I don't um, even know why I brought that up. It just came to mind. Well, actually, it does bring me. It does bring up a question that I had um, floating in my head a little bit when I saw the dates uh, of Everfree Northwest. Did you have any kind of stipulations about scheduling it on July fourth, since it's usually um, an, um, an Independence Day? Yeah, it's an interesting weekend. You know, uh, we've had a lot of discussions about that. Some folks, when you say it's going to be on July fourth. They go, oh, why did it have to be then? I've got plans with my family. I've got this or that going on. And other people, you say July 4th, and they're like, oh, good. I've got a full weekend. That makes it incredibly convenient. Hmm. Oh, There's no way to please everybody. But there are ways to try to sort of get um, a maximal result, I suppose. We have talked about whether the July 4th weekend works for us or not. I can't say what plans are in the works for that one way or the other, but I think it hasn't caused too many problems. And also, uh, well, it's not always um, like as much up to us as people might think, because we have yeah. to also work with the hotel um, and you know what dates do they have available. Um, and so there is a bit of... Uh, but uh, there is a bit of, um, I don't know what word I want to use for that, but um, it, it is a bit uh, It's a matter constrained. of practicality. Ah. It's a matter um, of practicality. We could choose other weekends, but most of the other weekends in the summer are, let's, let's just put it right there on the line, more expensive for everyone. The room rates go up. The cost of getting the convention space goes up. Uh it's it's all very expensive because those are the weekends that you know businesses come in they want to hold their things uh, other stuff like that the july 4th weekend is actually kind of optimal in a lot of ways prices are low and it's relatively easy to get around because it's not a big travel holiday so it works out nicely and that, that enables us to keep the prices down for our attendees because the last thing we want to do is say, oh yeah, by the way, it's going to be like $80, $90 to get in this year. And no, we're not, we don't want to do that to people. So but we have to make that compromise of picking a date that might be a little less convenient for some, but at least it's not going to break the bank. Hmm, true enough. And plus it kind of gives you an excuse to sell American flag themed ponies too. <laughs> I mean, do, we, do we even do that if we had that? Well, somebody's going to have to do it now. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, also, another question I had, um, we just had BabCon, BabsCon recently wrap up, and BronyCon's also on the way in August. Uh, are you feeling any pressure in regards to that, since uh, BabsCon's turning out to be, it turned out to be one heck of a huge convention, and BronyCon, like, the ipso facto con for bronies altogether? Oh, well, it's, it's not like we're in competition or anything, we're all kind of working toward the same goal. True. Mm -hmm. Um... BronyCon, uh, between BronyCon and uh, Free Northwest, I mean, we're on two separate coasts, so I think for the most part, uh, we service different uh, people. Um, honestly, if we were, quote, in competition, on end quote, with anyone, it would be BabsCon, and I don't think, again, I that's not what we're here for. Right. Um, heck, I mean, I'm, I'm a, have a good relationship. A relationship with uh, their director of media. I mean, we talk uh, every once in a while. Um, yeah, he's a really good guy. I mean, mm. I, I just hey, they had a really great con. I wish I could have uh, gone there. More power to them. <laughs> I'm definitely yeah, glad I'm to actually, hear that. I'm I... pretty excited that uh, things went well for them. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, just a good con is good for everybody. Oh yeah. Thankfully, this is the case. Like. It's refreshing to hear from um, directors of departments that we still have this sense of community because I, I I do think that the the competitiveness is sometimes overplayed or <laughs> drama. Can we just call it what it is? Yeah, there's lots of some drama, drama. and it's nice to see that um, there are still a lot of people that feel that good sense of community. 
Well, I think uh, I think culturally, uh, overall, we tend to sort of like watching things for the train wreck. You know, we love it when mm-hmm. stuff goes wrong. It's fantastic to watch all kinds of drama, people colliding, reality television. I don't and like it. Cats and dogs living together, mass hysteria. Okay, that is but, that's something entertaining. I don't like the drama part of it. But, I, don't, yeah, I don't like it either. I hate that's, drama. That's I like the Bill thing, Murray. Is I kind of have some faith in the fans of My Little Pony that we do take a little from the show and mm-hmm. we would rather get along and have a good time and make sure that you know the high tide floats all boats, as they say. Uh, if if we're getting along, we're all doing better in general. And there's no reason to be nasty to each other or to make it some kind of some kind of fierce competition. Mm-hmm. It'll just it'll work out and we'll be better for it. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I think that's about it for um, the que- the questions I have are related to uh, Everfree Northwest. Um, do you have anything, Deal? That's about it for me. They've been they they a lot of the talking themselves this time. You guys are evidently really excited about this convention and um, provide a lot of insight. So mostly it's that I love to hear the sound of my own voice. <laughs> nah. Good, I have a friend then. Uh, oh, there don't. we go. Oh, I hate recordings of my voice. <laughs> oh, so bad. Actually, I kind of do also, but that, that was that was part of the confusion earlier. Actually, I I sound terrible on the phone or over a microphone and. Things like that. It's just, uh, I don't know, it does weird things to my voice. Um, I also, one thing I do want to mention that uh, we haven't brought up is, of course, our charity. Um, we're going to be having another charity uh, auction. We're also going to be having a silent auction as well. Um, so we're hope. I mean, uh, last year we raised over uh, $20,000 for Seattle Children's Hospital. We're hoping to raise even more this year. Um, But yeah, so there will be plenty of opportunities to give for charity. And get cool stuff in return. Oh, yeah. I've seen some stuff that's going in the charity. Oh, man. That's... There's going to be, you want to know where the fierce competition is? There is going to be quite the bidding war on some of this stuff. It's going to be fun. I actually just heard some news uh, about one of the items we're getting might get uh, yeah, um, just uh, possibly get even getting signed. Um, so, yeah, no, there's yeah, I mean, there's just a ton of fantastic stuff. And uh, we are still accepting um, donations. So if you go to every com slash charity, you can go ahead and uh Fill out our donation form if you have some th- some cool donation you would like to uh, like to give to us for charity. Yeah, I mean it's it's great for the kids. Uh, the Seattle Children's Hospital—they're wonderful folks. I really believe in their mission, and this is also a good way to show that you know we're putting our money where our mouth is. We believe in uh, in the power of friendship and generosity, and. You know, maybe maybe we're not just a whole bunch of creepy adults into a kid's show, but maybe we're actually, you know, good folks. Mm. Very nice. I, I think it's a little of both, honestly. But. <laughs> yeah, I can't argue with you there. I'm, I'm crazy Only when it comes to the... generosity, though. Not doing it just out of the kindness of your hearts. Oh well, I guess there's a little of that. Just a, a little. little. Kindness. That's the uh, we'll, we'll go with a little of all the above. Plus, the attention's kind of nice. No? And, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> nice. and if people are would still like to volunteer, um, I believe that uh, our, you know, we are still accepting um, volunteer applications. I believe. And oh, hey, Thunderbolts and Lightning. Oh. You, I, see, you're you're down in uh, you're down in what Phoenix right now? Or no, no I was not, now I'm in Chicago. Chicago, okay, Chicago, right. You're getting a rainstorm and thunder and stuff, and it's been a beautiful, clear day here in Seattle. It's going to be like this all summer. Oh, you jerk. <laughs> <laughs> See, you mentioned volunteering, and then we get the ominous thunder. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Volunteer. Yeah. Don't, don't be like us. Save yourselves. <laughs> Run while you still can. No, I volunteer. Know. Actually, volunteering was one of the best things I ever did. Um, oh, yeah. Amen. It's it has been fantastic working for this convention, 
and I've worked many other conventions. This one is special to me, very special, because the, the, the sense of camaraderie and the just the incredible stuff I've seen while I've been working for the con, man, there's nothing like it. A lot of folks think, oh, I don't want to work for the con. That means I'm spending the whole time, you know, working and not having fun. There's a lot of fun to be had while working, too. It's, a, it's an incredible experience. So you don't even have to commit to doing it every year for the rest of your life. If you haven't yet had a chance to work with our staff, try it out for a year. I guarantee you'll have more chances to, you know, have cons where you don't necessarily work for us. But I think you'll find it's... It's a very incredible thing of its own. It's well worth it. Plus, you know, you get free admission. So there's that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you have to work for it. That is the thing. There still is work. Let's not uh, let's not make any mistake. There are things to be done. In fact, I think we have a list of open positions on our website. If you go to the there's a volunteer button along the left side, along the navigation buttons. So when it says volunteer, you go to that. You can see what's open. If you have That's skills that will help us out, yeah. Vendor support staff, merchandise staff, Do you have any... answer desk, auction gallery, and just oh, there you go. Of stuff. Oh, exactly. Oh, actually, uh, one of the uh, bigger things we actually have that for my department, uh, we're looking for a regional promotions coordinator for Portland. So, hey, if any of you are in Portland and uh, you know your promotions, uh, send us a send us an application. I want to I want to talk with you. Oh, yeah, there's a okay. yep. bunch of positions uh, you can apply for. That's great, and I'm sure a few people here will give it a shot. Uh, if Deal wasn't engrossed in everything he does, I'm sure he would. <laughs> Very true. If because for... he can't help himself, I think. I, I have the same problem. I've been very, very <laughs> busy lately with not just Everfree, but several other projects. And it kind of all uh, kind of all spiraled a bit out of control. Uh, Tim can attest that I have been a little late on getting some <laughs> things done for the con. This is because I went, well, I, I went... Where's my art? Where's my art? Where's I know. I know. <laughs> so I, I was like, oh, I have plenty of time to do this. This is the year I'm going to get all together. It's going to be nice and tight and professional. And then, oh, by the way, I'm moving to a new house. And there's going to be all this other stuff going on in my life. And I'm like, um, can I just get a year off of all the other stress so I can focus on the time? Because, I mean, yeah. That is a downside of, well, being an all-volunteer st- um, staff. I mean, everybody uh, here is volunteer. None of us get paid. Uh, so, I mean, our, our lives can get a bit uh, crazy at times. But, again, we always pull first. together. It takes a heart for service, and it's a it's a labor of love. It is exactly the sort of thing where I, I would say almost every year, almost every con that I staff at, during the convention, I'm like, oh, why do I do this? Why do I do this? Oh, this is miserable. I'm not doing this again. And then by the closing ceremonies right afterwards, yeah, I'll be back. I'll help out again. It turned out to be worth it. Because seeing how happy everybody is at the end, knowing that I had a part in that, well... I did mention generosity, didn't I? I'm a Rarity fan at heart. I can't help it. I've really got to contribute to this thing. Listen, you have a friend in that. Yes. You do, in fact, have a friend in that. Rarity, four days. Yeah. Yo. Rarity, Rarity is best pony. Luna is best princess. And uh, don't tell anybody else I said this, you know, except the people listening, right? But uh, Chrysalis is best queen. You're here. <laughs> well, she's the I mean, only queen I have this thing about <laughs> Nightmare Moon that for some reason I adore her so I don't know why that is eh, why not? Um, maybe it's because she can come into your dreams and well I don't know what your dreams are like but that's a dangerous subject that we want to walk away from yes walk away <laughs> from and sail behind the door with latches <laughs> and Everything else. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll have that pan- maybe we'll have that panel at a different convention. What did oh, uh, we could make a good late night panel? I don't know. Yeah. We actually don't have any late night programming. That, well, I mean, we have programming that goes late into the night, but uh, no adult stuff at Ever Free Northwest. Uh, nothing against it in particular. It's just that's our con is very family friendly. That and that's another thing to mention. If if you have kids 
or you have a little brother or sister or whatever that you want to bring with you, this is very much the convention to do it at because, you know, squeaky clean and yet still all kinds of fun. Promise. Family fun and squeaky clean? You I cater know. to a fine audience. Well, maybe I have a different <laughs> definition of squeaky clean than most, but seriously, it's all on the up and up. Just don't check under the fridge. Oh, <laughs> Why? What's under the V? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say uh, our second in command of security is under the fridge, but that's a that's kind of an in joke. Hmm. I don't think Tim even gets that one. I do not. Our second in command, Shotzi Stoffel, he uh, he was hiding under a table at the convention a good chunk of last year. People were poking. Are you sleeping down there? No, no, I'm awake. <laughs> just weird stuff that happens. I'm telling you, half the fun of the convention happens in being staff. Just the crazy, unfortunately sleep-deprived hijinks that go on. Uh, so many stories oh, I can I tell. Know. Yeah. Shaq, so... The- Actually, uh, short story. I think I'm the only guy in this community that's ever said, I don't want to talk to Tara Strong right now. Because we had to do a sound test with her at 2 in the morning, which was only 11 for her. Oh, yeah. So we're just going downstairs from our hotel room, and I'm just kind of like, I really don't want to talk to Tara Strong right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that would be a bit of a rare sentence, but I can see it. In this community, I should think so. Whoa. <laughs> All right, let's see. Is there anything else? I think I've rambled about the con just so much right now. I, I think my head's empty by this point. I, I used it all up. That's it. I got nothing more. Well, all then, right. that's perfect. But let's see if our viewers have anything else to say. Well, viewers oh. and panel, of course. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's, uh, sometimes uh, they hold some pretty great questions. I could probably survive some questions. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, open it up then. Uh, panel, you can go ahead and unmute yourselves and feel free to ask any questions that you may have. Chat room, if you have any questions for our interview guests here, please italicize and underline your questions. If you do not do that, we will not recognize that they are questions. We have to emphasize this, apparently. But yes, uh, while we're waiting for the chat room to post up any questions, uh, panel, do you have any questions? Oh, do I, do I have questions? Oh, no, no, no. Um, I'm talking about the, uh, ch- the oh, little no, 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 panel. No, no, yeah, no, here. they have questions. That would be awkward to ask yeah, uh, you guest. For yeah, I should, you, let, let me ask you something. I'm sure <laughs> <you> <laughs> uh, what kind of musicians are you guys going to have at Everfree? Mostly tall ones. <laughs> Most, what? Never <laughs> mind. Okay, uh, well, I, I was just being silly. Um, I appreciate the answer, no less. Yeah, yeah Tim. Tim, maybe you can answer this one better than me. Well, I think we're probably going to go with uh, something like last year. No, um, one of the nights we'll have um, uh, more of an acoustic set, and the other night we'll have more of an electronic set. So uh, you can expect acoustic, electronic, um, some, uh, maybe some rap. Um, so no, we, sh- we typically, again, we're, I believe we're going to have about 20 uh, artists. So we're going to have a large spread um so there's gonna be something that you're gonna like um we, and we also might have a special uh, surprise um again nothing Ooh, i can okay. talk about quite yet but and may not happen but we may have a uh, a surprise that would Is, be very cool would that surprise be dj tetsu a good friend of mine hey he's a friend of mine too um, dude <laughs> Babs you Con, I was me. hanging out with him the whole time. <laughs> you roomed with, with me at... Uh, I'm sorry, but anyway. Um, though, uh, in the way of this special surprise that you've mentioned, now you say you can't tell us anything, but you can't give us just the slightest hint. Give us a give us a little... Give us a word. I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember. Is this somebody tall? Because uh, it might be a tall person. Might be a tall. He <laughs> was pretty tall. It, uh, what I can say is... Uh, this would be the first time this person would have sung at Everfree Northwest. That's so, that's about all I could right? have, all I could say. That's fair. That's so, fair. That narrow that does narrow it down somewhat. So yeah. I yeah. guess there's that. So if you've been to our convention a couple years in a row, it will it will still be a surprise. It won't be like, oh yeah, that's the same thing. We see that every year. No, no, no. This is going to be new. 
as I said, so, I mean, it could all, of course, fall apart, but I'm hopeful. It sound, um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Lucky well, it sounds it. like it's going to be an excellent convention. I'm sad that it's clear across the country. Yeah, you think it's bad for you. I'm right hey, now debating on if I should... Me. You think I'm it's bad? Take... What do you mean? You think it's bad for me? I live in New York. I have a house. No, I yeah, so I got... you'll just go to Bromicon, um, yeah. since yeah. that's a lot closer. Uh, again, yeah. Um, <laughs> if you're on the East Coast, Bromicon is the place to be. If you're on the I, West no, Coast, I've been to Bromicon uh, a hundred times, and I keep hearing good things about Everfree that I'd really like to. I'd really like I to know. experience, but I don't have the funding for it. I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm Aww, there, bro. Yeah. Well, it's not like I have the spare money to get out to the East Coast all that often. True. So, but I, I also mean, lack employment at the moment. So, believe it or help. not, yeah, believe I'm not. smack dab in the middle, so I can go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but the downside is you have to live in Phoenix. No, that's right. Yeah. You're out of Phoenix. You're in Chicago, which is even better because I've been there. Um, I Chicago's nice. Chicago's nice. I've been worse places, that's for sure. Uh, the the funny thing is, Everfree Northwest is the only My Little Pony convention that I have been to yet. I wanted to get to BabsCon. I started to make plans for it, and then I realized if I tried to do that in addition to moving to a new house and doing stuff for Everfree Northwest and doing stuff for the comic shop I work for and doing this and that and the other thing, uh, no, I, I just don't have room for it. So... I, I just I went ahead and sent that staff artist to have fun for me. Anybody who who all here was there? Who was at BabsCon? Anybody from here? No? Actually I, I went to BabsCon. Sketchy. Okay, yeah. yeah. Did you see Dana Simpson there? Sitting at the table hawking her books. Actually, did she work at the table? I'm trying to remember if she I think she did. Yeah, that's right. That's why I was gonna go, is so I was gonna help her out of her table. She does a great webcomic. I uh, was... Kevin, hmm? I was too busy partying up with DJ Tetsu in his room, so... Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a really good first con, so... I mean... Cool. Yeah, hopefully I'll get to attend the next one, because mm. I feel like I'm kind of isolated. And here I am helping on a pony con, and I've only been to this one. Well, that's not exactly a breadth of experience, you know? It'd be good to get out and, you know, get familiar with the others. Well, yeah, at least uh, Everfree's in your backyard. Last year I drove yeah. from San Diego with all my friends all the way up to you guys. And that I've, was, that was a road that, trip. <laughs> I've done that road trip for other conventions. Actually, I've headed down that way via car a couple times for uh, Further Confusion, which is the furry con that happens actually down in... Actually, it's, it's more like it was San Mateo, now it's San Jose. Irvine. So it's not quite... Like, eh. Now, um, the, the trip sorry, back is always no, the longest. Sketch, sketchy. I'm, I'm, I am sorry to interrupt, but we're running the interview a little lengthy this oh, time. Yeah. So, yeah oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. We got to start. It's wrapping fine. It up it's here. just, um, did we even? Did anyone here even get to? Of our viewers, get to ask anything? Well, um, I checked a look. At, I took a look at our chat room here. There's not a whole lot of um, good questions. Questions. Well, they did you ask the, the ones that I know you want to? Yeah. You can't even not as ask well. us weird questions. It doesn't have to be, like, a really straightforward, you know... Well, well that's what I'm talking about, because they mm. do, in fact, have those very questions that I know they want to ask. All right. So, we might as well get the crazy, silly questions out of the way before the interview actually does end. Uh, if you had a choice, would you go with a party cannon or the base cannon? And we'll uh, we'll go with Tim first on the answer. Oh, God. My, que my answer is unchanged base cannon. Always a base cannon. <laughs> That and, thing is uh, amazing. Of course. See, I would, I would have to, I would have to say, I, I'm going to skew a little bit further than the base cannon. I'd have a bass cannon. I would just shoot fresh fish at people. That could be amazing <laughs> for certain <laughs> underprivileged countries. Yeah, it'd be wonderful. If you, if you oh, visit, if you visit Pike Place Market here in Seattle, you'll get to see guys throwing fish. I'm not even hell, kidding. You know, that would, that do. would more than complete the funding for your silent auction for the children's hospital. Just yeah. sell fresh fish all day. Hell, maybe serve it to the kid. Well, I don't know a kid that really likes fish, but... Oh, actually, I, oh, no. There are a lot of kids around here that like fish, but we, we have kids who are raised on, on sushi because it's all over the place here. We have, we have kaiju really... sushi places, you know, the <laughs> conveyor belt sushi and stuff. Yeah, that's fish. 
Oh, I, I can't believe uh, we almost missed this question altogether, Con Ooh. especially considering our, uh, what we do here. Um, are you going to be streaming any other panels or events? Currently, we don't have any uh, plans uh, to stream. Um, we are looking into recording panels, um, but currently we have nothing in place to stream panels. There are a lot of difficulties with, with streaming from the hotel that we're at. One of the disadvantages... Their their network infrastructure is not real great, and there's only so much that we can bring in to do it. And we have kind of, I think, been trying to spend that money at you know elsewhere, trying to do other things with that. No, mm -hmm. you see, that's why if any one of us could make it, we would be perfect for this because we would have absolutely no ideas of charging a convention for the services of our show. We wouldn't, mostly because of our sheer size. Uh, and because, well, come on, we just like to help out. We're not lending for the money. When do we even we aren't? make money? Huh. Well, as, long as, you're not using, as long as you're not trying to use the hotel wireless, because it can only survive so much. Oh, there's no way I would even touch a hotel wireless. Oh, God. It's just a think about shame, it. man. Like, as much as they put into building those things, if they had spent, um, like, 1%, <laughs> half a percent more on their networking. Oh. Although, oh, I seem God. to recall, and... and now, this might be dangerous to me to talk about, but I do seem to recall a little bit of discussion amongst some of our staff, our IT staff and such, about how we can work with the hotel to make things work a bit better this year than they did last year. So it's not going to be terrible. You know, just, just saying to folks who were a little frustrated with things last year, maybe, uh, it'll be a bit of a better situation, I think. I, I don't know exactly how those talks have gone. I am not in the IT department, so... Yeah. You don't have to worry about too much. We're we're a reasonably popular podcast, but not so much on the recorded interviews. I'd say the only people who are going to hear this like all the way are the people currently in the audience. Actually, no. the YouTubes have gotten a lot better about that, especially Have they? Yeah, and I think the segmenting is also going to really start getting people hitting the interviews a lot more. Well, that's exciting. Then maybe you should keep the the funny bits to a minimum, but although don't do so on our behalf, I'm sure we would love to have that in the recording. <laughs> oh, funny, funny bits. Hey, I can do funny bits all night. It's a matter of making sure I'm not saying anything that'll get the convention in trouble or get me in trouble with the convention or, you know, cause a nuclear meltdown or, you know, release yeah. national secrets into the wild or anything like that. No, we release only do that on Tuesdays. Into the wild. You know, that's an, this is an interesting sentence altogether. Yeah. Huh. All right, well, uh, let's see here. Um, da, 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 I da. think we should probably call it. Yeah, yeah I think uh, you've heard uh, enough from me. There, there's, there's <laughs> a, there, we got a couple more questions here, but yeah, I don't, oh. I don't think there's anything here that absolutely has to be asked. Uh, well, uh, we can just rapid fire them. All right. Yeah. Um, let's see. Cupcakes and muffins. There you go. Yeah, go for that. Damn it! I was just about to say that. Cupcakes. Cupcakes. Well, they, they see they call cupcakes fairy cakes in England. Uh, so, Is that true? I, I will, yeah. Well, some people do. It depends. There are a whole bunch of different terms for such things. But uh, I, I'm more of a muffin sort myself, I have to say. Old dear Sweet Celestia, she's right. Yeah, of course I'm right. And Wikipedia is my friend. <laughs> <laughs> fairy cakes. All right. And uh, let's see. Um, uh, unfortunately, Creatures, um, well, I think I understand Creatures' question. He kind of went a little long-winded, but basically, uh, uh, just uh, real fast, um, have you had um, any, um, uh, have you had any uh, pro um, issues with uh, hotel staff um, with, uh, ah, crap, I can't phrase this right. Um, how is the staff going to deal with uh, partying getting too party? Oh, party getting too loud? Yes. Uh, honestly, mm -hmm. I don't think we have any. Um, I mean, if it's happening within uh, their hotel rooms, I don't think we really have any uh, jurisdiction. So, I mean, so uh, honestly, I think the hotel staff would have to uh, handle something like that. I mean, maybe if one of the staffers are passing by and we notice, oh man, this party is incredibly loud, maybe we could knock and be like, hey, can you quiet it down? But, oh, um, see now, I wish I wish I had the uh, our ho one of our hotel leads here. Uh, we have two people who handle liaising with the hotel, 
And one of them is actually my wife. So she's probably actually downstairs right now, but I told her, no, don't interrupt during my interview. So, <laughs> yeah. But I'm pretty sure that she would say something along those lines and that we are on really good terms with the hotel staff. So if anything weird comes up, it's going to be very easy for us to say to them, hey, yeah, this is kind of this is kind of y'all's bailiwick. Could you go see what's going on there? And they'll be glad to help us out. So I, I don't think it's not going to be the sort of thing where, you know, suddenly the hammer is going to fall and there's going to be no fun. I think it'll be a little bit nicer than that. You know, it'll be, uh, guys, just bring it down a little bit and we're all good. Just remember the walls are made out of cereal boxes and airspray. Like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, okay. I saw a question I wanted to go ahead and uh, mention. Uh, Sonic oh, uh, 5421. Uh, do you, you guys do DeviantArt? Yes, we have wow. a DeviantArt. Uh, DeviantArt group and a DeviantArt account. Oh. Um, so yeah, that's uh, every northwest dot deviantart dot com is the group. Is it every and... northwest or every free NW? Uh, oh, no, um, it looks like every northwest. Take a link into the itself. chat. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. So okay. every free NW is oh, the perfect. account. Every free northwest is the group. Okay, that's, but they're both. That's us. What's confusing. I, I thought they were both associated with it. Okay. Yeah, they're both us. They're just one's our specific account, the other is a group. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, looks like we ran on this interview a little bit longer than we anticipated, but hey, that's always a sign of a good interview, right? Indeed. I went and punched my router in the throat, so I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't we go okay. ahead and uh, wrap it up then? Uh, do you have any quick final shout-outs before we uh, fin- b- to, before we uh, let you go? Uh, woo, shout outs. I should have thought of this ahead of time. Well, I already mentioned my staff artist, uh, Dana Simpson. I have another staff artist helping me out, Leakfish. Uh, somebody, you know, you've probably seen her work at other conventions. She did some stuff. I think she did some stuff for BabsCon. She sure did. The, the t-shirt for them. She did some stuff for, um, oh, what was that other convention? Crap. Oh, I forgot now. But she's, she's done a bunch of good stuff. And we're going to see a whole bunch more art from them and such. So I'm going to shout out to them. You two are awesome. And you said you had a wife? Yeah, she's uh, well, she's, she's the co-lead for hotel stuff. Well, then throw a shout out to her. Why not? Yeah, I can do that. That's Silver Quill. She's awesome. She also ran the uh, writing track last year. Was that the first year? Last yeah, year. so she ran it last year. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, she's a big reason why our writing track is how it is. Um, uh, she used to do the writing track for uh, Anthrocon, was it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so... And, and for Rainforest and for, you know, a whole bunch of stuff for other furry conventions and things. So she has a lot of experience. And then it was funny. Last year she said, oh, this uh, Pico bot, this Pico Pie fellow who's uh, who's been very involved in the writing track, I think we're good to let him take it over next year. And you know what? He's been doing a great job. So, hey, Pico Pie, here's your shout up, too. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. We've been doing I a lot. Love... We've I'm been doing a lot. To... <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> <laughs> but gotta, gotta let Tim... Give his bits and sign off. <laughs> yep. A shout out to um, everybody on my media team. You're all fantastic. And just shout out to every free um, Northwest. Um, first convention I ever staffed at and uh, I've staffed every year and I love it. Uh, you, everybody, you all are great. And I look forward to seeing everybody there. All of you. You all have to go now. It's an obligation. It's a moral imperative. All right. All right, well, we're go- uh, it's been awesome having you guys here. I can't wait to see what happens with Everfree Northwest. I, I'm definitely hoping I can make it. I unfortunately can't make any promises one way or another, but if it's a possibility, I'm definitely going to make it, especially after a single the vendors, my wallet screaming. Oh, if you can make it, <laughs> hey, be sure to send me an email so I can get you a media badge. Oh, I certainly will let you know. Ooh, definitely do that. Ooh, I would know. love to see the Brony Show guys there. Because I get to meet him finally in person. Yeah. Well, there's a possibility. I mean, I'm probably I might be able to attend. Blank might be able to come with me. Guess we'll figure it all out. Hey, we'd love to have you. Hey, you right. get me there. That would, no, you <laughs> won't be able to get, no, you won't be able to get me. There. Not in time, anyway. Because uh, no, that's uh, yeah, much more. Well, now okay, okay, we gotta do, we gotta, we've gone on long enough. We have to <laughs> kick our D pad. Go get D pad to Everfree Northwest. Oh, oh you'd love me there. They. I do, work. I do work. Let's Indiegogo this. <laughs> just, just get me there, and I'll basically be convention bitch. 
as I typically am, anyway. Oh my. Indeed. Well, not that kind. We'll talk. Anyway. <laughs> I am literally Anyway, this interview falling. has run on for quite some time, but you've both been wonderful <laughs> guests, I assume. I only just got here. Uh, <laughs> so, Pony Tim, Gemini, thank you both for coming on. It's been absolutely wonderful. Now, thank you so I much for wish I could let them say bye, but Gemini might say bye for the next five minutes, so I'm going to quickly <laughs> turn this over to Sir. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Okay. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 <laughs> All right, and uh, both uh, Gemini and Tim have been let go.